All right, guys, so I think most of us know exactly what a triangle is, right? It's a figure with three sides, like two-dimensional closed figure with three sides. But I think where students get mixed up is all the different types of triangles that we have, what are their names, and exactly how do we classify them? Because it is a lot to remember. So what I wanna do in this video is kind of go through how we classify triangles, as well as go through some examples of how we can use classification to help us solve some math problems. But before we begin, what I wanna do is have a little fun. Usually when I'd say that in class, students knew I was up to something that definitely was not going to be fun. But follow me here. This is, trust me, not any extra work. All I want you to do is simply just take out a sheet of paper and just draw a triangle, any triangle that you want, but just draw a triangle, assuming you know exactly what a triangle is. All right. So now that you have a triangle, I want you to go and take a look at it. I've done this activity a couple times in class and, and without a doubt, the most common triangle that I'd see students make is going to look something like this. Now, is that your triangle? Don't cheat and try to cover it up. But I think it's important for us to kind of understand when we think about a, a triangle, when we think about a triangle, what it's going to look like. But it's also very important for us to recognize that this is not the only form that triangles come with. And when we would do this in class, what I do is have students like hold up their sheet of paper and we'd go ahead and take a look at all the different sizes of the triangles, the small ones, the large ones, as well as the ones that looked a little bit different than this. And I think really it kind of comes down to the more experience you have with triangles, the more likely you are to have drawn a triangle that's going to look differently than that. Because this is kind of like your basic triangle. You'll see this in children's books. You'll see this on TV, right? But we all know there's other types of triangles. So let's go ahead and explore these other triangles. If you didn't draw this, I'm going to draw something similar to what you did. Okay, so for all of these different triangles, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the name that we give that triangle because that's very important, not only in mathematics, but especially in geometry where we have to classify things. We have to understand when we talk about something, we want to make sure we know precisely what we are dealing with. I'm going to give you an example of the shape, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You could rotate it, flip it, enlarge it, or shrink it. But again, the general shape is going to give you an idea of the triangle and then also give you some details why one triangle is going to be different than another triangle. So the first triangle, we're going to deal with is going to be the right triangle. And the reason why I call it a right triangle is because it has only one right angle. We show that one right angle by using representing this box. If you remember when we talked about perpendicular lines, that's also how we represented a right angle, which again measures only 90 degrees. It's important to also remember that a triangle can only have one right angle, but we'll talk about that more in the next video. Moving on to the next triangle is going to be the acute triangle. Now the acute triangle basically just has three acute angles. We don't know what the measure are. We don't know if any of them are equal to any of it. They just have to be smaller than 90 degrees, right? Because remember nine degrees we represent as the right angle. These are all going to be smaller. Now I don't know the measure of these angles, but I think you could probably agree that these are all going to be less than nine degrees. So this, we could classify this as an acute angle. Now, if we have a right triangle, which measures nine degrees, an acute triangle, which has three angles that are less than nine degrees. Hopefully, if you remember our measures of angles, then there has to be something with obtuse. And yes, there is an obtuse triangle, and all that's going to be is one angle, which is larger than 90 degrees. So if you notice, just like the right triangle, you know, whenever you have one right angle, it's a right triangle. Whenever you have one obtuse angle, it's called an obtuse triangle because we can't have more than one of them inside of a triangle. Again, we'll talk more about that later. The last one's not going to be with if it's larger than 90, less than 90, or equal to 90. It's just going to measure if all the angles are equal equal to each other or not. And that is what we call the equal angular triangle. And you can see here that I just represented only one tick mark. That means that these angles are going to be equal in value. And if you want a little bonus tip here, those measures are going to be 60 degrees. So the next triangle is probably the most popular one. This triangle represents probably the most closely when we're looking at the sides. Unfortunately, though, we don't have any justification for that. So that's why I don't want to make sure I classify this. However, when we do have all three sides are going to be exactly the same, just like an equal angular was when all three angles are the same, an equal lateral triangle is when all three sides are the same. So you can see I represented each side here with just one tick mark. And again, they have three equal sides, three congruent sides, right? They have the same measure for them. And yes, if you're thinking about this, equal lateral triangles are also equal angular triangles. Because again, if you have three sides that are same, then guess what? You're also gonna have three equal angles. And for some reason, I just noticed I call this equal angular triangular and equilateral triangular, which I have no idea. So let's go ahead and fix those. So now let's just go to the next one by just removing one of these sides. So three equal sides is an equilateral. Two equal sides is gonna be what we call an isosceles triangle. So again, you can see that we have two sides are equal, but we don't have any justification for the third side. And then the last one is when we have no justification on the side lengths, if they're going to be equal in measure, and that is going to be what we call a scalene triangle. So probably the best way to go ahead and classify our original triangle, since we don't have actually any measures for them, would be a an acute scalene triangle. Why is doing all this so helpful for it? Well, let's go and take a look at two different examples so we can see how we can benefit from this knowledge. And hopefully you wrote down this knowledge or you take a picture 
picture because I think if there's anything that works them value in this video, it's exactly these notes right here. At least worth a super chat or something like that, right? Right? Maybe. Just joking around. You don't need to give me a super chat as long as you're subscribed because you should be subscribed, right? Yeah, of course you're subscribed. I know that. Okay, let's go ahead and tackle example one. What if I told you here's a triangle? Now, this is a equilateral triangle. Don't go back and look at your notes. Don't rewind me. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. You need to know this information. If I told you I have an equilateral triangle that looks something like this, and I wanted to know what is the measure of each side, what would you do? Well, if you know what an equilateral triangle means and what that does for the context of the problem, then this problem is actually pretty straightforward. Remember, from the notes we just did, an equilateral triangle has three equal sides. That means the length of these sides are all the same. Now, the problem is I don't know what that measure is they are, but I do know they are all going to be the same. So all I simply need to do is find the measure of one of these sides, and that's going to be the measure for all of them. That could be helpful if you needed to find the perimeter or like what I'm asking is just what is the measure of one side? So what do we do? If these all these angles are equal to each other, do we write an equation that looks like this? And the answer is no, we don't need two different equations, right? We only need to set two angles equal to each other and then solve for X. So then which one do you pick? Well, I don't know. Pick whatever one you want to. I'm just going to pick the 6X minus 6 and the 4X plus 1. So now just going back to some algebra due practice. Remember, whenever we're solving for X and we have a variable on the left as well as on the right hand side, what we want to do is get them to the same side. Now, typically, I always like to get them to the left hand side. So therefore, it's just a little, a little bit easier to go ahead and write my solution as X equals. Not in every problem is that going to be best. So now I'm going to have is a 2X minus 6 is equal to one. Now what I want to do is just use my two-step equations. I'm going to add a six to both sides and then divide by two. Now you might be thinking, crap, <laughs> we got a fraction. Something must be wrong. I hate fractions. But again, fractions are numbers too. We have to treat all of our numbers equally. And again, we don't even care if it's a fraction because again, this is not the answer, right? I said, what is the measure of these sides? I didn't say solve for X. So make sure whenever you're doing a problem like this, one of the common mistakes that students will make is they'll just go ahead and solve for X because they're so used to it from their algebra class. In geometry, we got to really make sure that we are reading and understanding the question. I want to know what the whole side length is. Now, again, they're all equal, so I only need to pick one. So I'm just going to pick this side. To find the length of this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal a seven halves. And you can see, actually, guys, this problem is not that bad, right? If you can think of six as over one, two evenly divides into six a three times. So I have a three times seven minus six, 21 minus a six, which again is just going to be a 15. Therefore, the length of each of these sides is going to be a 15. Now, again, it could be like in feet and centimeters, inches, whatever may be your problem. But hopefully you guys understand understand that there is no way I could solve this problem unless I knew what type of triangle it was. Once I knew that it was an equilateral triangle, I could go ahead and set my two sides equal to each other, solve for X, and then plug it into one of the sides. What if I told you I had an isosceles triangle and I wanted to figure out what the basis of the triangle and that triangle looked like this? What would you do? Hopefully you recognize that a lot of pictures are not drawn to scale. So you don't want to trust or assume what the picture looks like. However, I think I did a pretty good job drawing this triangle because we know that an isosceles triangle have two equal sides, right? Now, when we want to find the base, we need to figure out the measure of this. But again, we don't know what X is. But since I know that this side length is equal to this side length, again, I can create an equation and solve for X. Now, again, just like I did in the last problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the X's to the same side. Again, in this example, I'm going to do that to the left-hand side. Okay, so now I have a two-step equation. I'm going to add a three to both sides and then divide by two. Okay, so now I know that X equals five, but again, that is not the answer. That is not what I was asking for. I wanna know what the base of that triangle is, this side length. So then all I'm simply gonna do is again, plug five in for X. And you can see now I get a base of 27. Now, hopefully you see the importance of being able to classify your triangles. It helped us solve these problems that if I didn't know these notes, I would have been stuck staying up all night trying to figure out just how to do the problem. Now you can see how these notes are gonna be so important. Now in the next video, what I wanna do is actually expand upon this and take this classification to the next next level. And what we're going to do is look at how to be able to classify triangles when we have coordinate points, meaning it's not me giving you what exactly a picture looks like. We're going to actually show and prove how we can go ahead and classify the triangles. So if you want to see how we can classify triangles using the coordinate plane, go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.